we learned about some natural disasters. Do you remember one that we learned about, Nancy? Earthquake. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anyone else remember something we learned about on Friday? Cherry? The animals die if they don't move to another place. Excellent. Sometimes if they don't move to another place, they will die. Very, very true. And sad, but that is life. So how environments change, we're going to start with watching a little video, making some observations, and doing the writing on page 321. So everyone, go ahead and open up to page 321, or take out your science notebook. I need someone to read the first two sentences for us. Kaki, you want to start? Go ahead, Kaki. When rain or snow falls, pop. Doesn't, does not. Doesn't fall for a long time, the ground becomes very dry. And plants might, may die. This change is harmful to animals that eat plants and use them for shelter. Very good. Okay. So the environmental change here, what is the cause? We did a lot with cause and effect. Remember, cause is what makes it happen. Nancy, what is the cause of this change? It is when the land gets very dry or a stock or a storm hits. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ground becomes very dry. All right. Or when a storm rolls in, these two together are the cause. What's the effect? What happens because of this? How about Kitty? Go ahead, Kitty. The effect uh, might be if ground becomes very dry and plants may die. All right, that's one effect. Plants may die. There's another one, too. What's another effect of this? Because, of course, there's more than one, right? In the environment, one change can affect a lot of things. What's another effect? Plants may die. What else? Fred, can you think of another effect? So hot weather. Hot weather might, would probably be a cause. That might cause the land to dry out. The cause is the ground becomes dry and storms roll in. What is the effect of these? What do they do? What do they, what's the effect of them? They harm the environment. All right, I'll circle that one, yes. Harmful, they harm the plants, they harm the animals. Nuna, do you have another one? Destroy many animals' homes. All right, destroy many animals' homes. That's actually an effect of wildfires, right? So we'll say destroys many animals' homes and causing, it says right here, causing fire. The effect is fire. So we have that it's harmful, plants die, animals die, homes are destroyed, there's a fire. This change in the environment can be very dangerous. So the second two sentences starting from, but when storms. Let's have Jenny from there but to the end. Some throw in an even more history change can happen lightning and this word is lightning lightning can strike causing fire while fire can spend quickly and destroy animal homes many animals homes can you say that one more time no more homes. good much better jenny thank you for reading Let's watch the video now about the San Joaquin Kit Fox. When rain or snow doesn't fall for a long time, the ground becomes very dry and plants may dry up and die. This extreme change can be harmful to animals that depend on those plants for food or shelter. But when storms roll in 
an even more extreme change may come. Lightning can strike, and the dried plants may catch fire from sparks from the lightning. Then wildfires can quickly spread and destroy many animals' homes. Endangered species, such as the... Who knows what endangered means? Endangered species, such as the San Joaquin kit fox. Uh, Simon? It means that there are not many left. Excellent! Endangered. Perfect, Simon. It has the word danger in it. It is in danger of going extinct. There's not many left. In danger of going extinct. In danger of there being no more because there's not many left. So these San Joaquin kit foxes are endangered. Endangered species, such as the San Joaquin kit fox, are at even greater risk when fire forces them out of their habitat. All right, so we want to think about how the fire can affect the San Joaquin kit fox and other endangered animals. So, the question. This San Joaquin kit fox lost its home because of a wildfire. What do you think will happen to it now? All right, go ahead and start writing. If you need anything spelt, just let me know. Uh, the San Joaquin kit fox uh, now is in the fire or uh, the fire has already happened. Great question. It says the San Joaquin kit fox lost its home because of a wildfire. So the fires already happened. It survived. The fox is alive, but it's lost its, it's lost its home to the fire. Also, quick note, Joaquin is a Spanish name, and in Spanish, the J is the H sound, like home. So it's Joaquin. Joaquin Kit Fox. All right, so let's hear some answers. Who's done? Who wants to share? Let's see it. Danny, we haven't heard from you yet. Go ahead, Danny. They will move to another place but can't adapt fast, so it will soon be extinct or could luckily recover. Excellent. I like your use of the word luckily. Great. Excellent, Danny. Katie, you haven't answered a question yet. Go ahead, Katie. I think the San Joaquin kid fox will move to another forest and live there. If it doesn't move, it will die. Excellent. Very good. It needs to move. Like Dami said, after it moves, it now has to adapt to a new environment too. It depends. Are they good at handling change? Can they handle the change? Boo, what did you write? They could change environment, but they also need to adapt with the new with the new home. Excellent. Very good. How about Fred? I think now it is going to find a new home because of the environment and maybe it is already dead because the the wildfire. Okay, very good. Or injured. It could be hurt from the wildfire. Kuhn, go ahead, Kuhn. Back to you. It will need to make a new home and go to another place. If it don't move, it will die. Excellent. Very good. And Ming Ang, go ahead, Ming Ang. Uh, mm, I think it will be extinct because its family has died in the fire. Okay. All right. And Daisy, last one. Go ahead, Daisy. I think if the fox lost its home, it can still stay alive but move to another place. It may be die too. I can, it can cause fire so quickly that the animals can't run through. Excellent. Wonderful, Daisy. One correction. Know the word no be. It may die too. You don't need the word be. Nice work, everybody. All right, everyone. We've already done this page, but we didn't get to look at this page too long. So please turn to page 323. So first, I want everyone to underline the words volcano. 
We're underlining the change. What's the change in the second one? Sup, what is the change in this one? What's causing drought. the change? Oh, so you're looking at the bottom one? That's okay, exactly. Drought, drought is this one. Here it's a volcano, here it's a drought. Who can give me one of the other ones? Van Chi. River might change its course. Very good. A river might change its course. Course is another word for direction. Like the racetrack course, the bumper car course. It's the path you take on a racetrack in a car. All right, or the obstacle course, when you run around all the different things. All right, it's the path of the river, course. Boo, what's the last change? A human cut down tree. Very good, okay. I see a land. Mm -hmm. Perfect, everyone go ahead and underline these in your book, if you have your book. First one, volcano, can I please have? Simon, can you please read about the volcano? A volcano can cover land with lava and ash. Lava is melted rock from inside a volcano. It can change land. It may kill plants. The ash can cloud the ash can cloud the sky so that the temperature of the land cools. Very good. The ash can block the sunlight and make it colder and not very safe to breathe either. Those gases are not very safe to breathe. All right, what about the river? This is the river, but this river changed course. I'll do its other course in white. The river used to go like this. It changed course, it changed direction. So, who can read about a course changing direction, a, course, a river changing direction for us and how it changes? Fred, go ahead, Fred. A river might change its course over many years and from, from uh, an outbox let when water changes, animals that live near rivers may move away or change new change new organisms might take their place very good okay so it formed an oxbow lake this lake here used to be part of the river now it's a lake that's shaped like this animals that live near the rivers need to move away or change this one a drought we've not heard from katie in a while go ahead katie Drought. Drought or lack of water may cause plants to die. Less water also means less food for animals. Animals may need to search for food and water elsewhere or they may die out. Very good. Okay, so Kitty, what do herbivores eat? Remember, we have herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore. What do herbivores eat? Do you remember? Herbivore eat grass. Very good. Grass or other plants. Nuna, what happens to the plants when there's a drought? It will be dry and die. Yes, exactly. When they get dry and die, what happens to the herbivores, Ruby? Uh, the herbivores cannot uh, eat anymore and it will die. Cherry, what happens to the carnivores when the herbivores die? It has nothing to eat. Exactly, they're all connected. If plants die, everything dies. The animals that eat the plant die and then the carnivores have no food and they die. So droughts are really, really, really dangerous. Vicky, go ahead and read the last one about humans cut down trees. Humans cut down trees and clear land. Those kill plants and destroy wood sources. Sources of animals that live in there. Animals may move, move in areas where they would not 
Good, where they will not normally be found. So if their home's destroyed, they might move to a different environment where they're not usually found. Okay, everybody, this was your homework. This was your homework, right? We've made it here. Everyone, go ahead and get ready to draw and show me what you put for your homework. All right, mixed opinions about drought. Drought is a water change. Yes, it's the land changing. It's become more dry, but it's because of water. Volcano is because of the land. This is because of humans, and this one is also because of water. Now, number six, think of one or two kinds of environmental changes. What might happen to the animals that live in those environments? We have not heard from Dami in a long time. Dami, what did you write for number six? Volcanoes, eruption, and wildfires may burn down trees, and some people and animals die and some move away. It may cause time to let the place fully regrow. Excellent, perfect. It will take time. Kaki, go ahead. They, it might die or move to the other place to live. Very good. Mooney, can you read what you wrote for your homework? Lot can get tree fall down and the animal can lose habitat and lost food maybe can die too. Excellent. Thank you for talking about floods. All right, let's get one or two more. How about Ruby? Ruby, what did you write for your homework about environments? Some animals will die and some will move away. For example, wildfire and volcano eruption. Excellent. Very good. Okay. I think that's enough examples. Excellent job, everybody, on your homework. Thank you. All right, so here's the quiz code and game. All right, third place, floating pig. Second place, dancing slugs. And first place, hurdling turtles. Good job, Min Aang, Ruby, Ryan, Zoiming, and Fred. Nice work. Let's take a quick yeah, look at some good. of the questions. What type of change do you see? A land change, good. What type of land do you see? Four player people put water, but this is human. It is on the water, but what is changing? Is it the water that's changing? Human. No, it's the trash. Oh, yes. It's the trash yes. from people. Oh, water pollution. Very good, water pollution, exactly. Oh, it's the yeah. people changing it. What type of land change do you see? Water. A lot of people put land, but what is changing this tree? Is it the what? land changing the tree? No, water, less water. Excellent, what? less water, a drought. This one was hard. It's the drought changing the tree, not the land. If it was an earthquake, if there was an earthquake and the tree fell over, then it would be land. But it's because of a drought, because of water. Choose the fast change. Nice. Choose a slow change. Erosion. Human. Very good. Deforestation. Remember we learned this class last class? This, I can't speak today. This one last class. Deforestation is, has the word forest in it. Cutting down forest by humans. This one, fast or slow, fast hurricanes. Here we go, fast or slow, fast change. Nice work. Oh, this one we had a bit more people get wrong. This is a slow change and this is from climate change. The earth is getting warmer because the environment change that animals and plants are changing and because of that, the polar bear has less food. The environment has slowly been getting warmer and warmer and warmer. When the environment changes, the polar bear doesn't have as much food as it used to. It doesn't have as much ice 
to stand on for hunting. So it's getting harder and harder for the polar bear to hunt in the ocean because there's less ice and less fish. Okay, so that is slow. That took 10, 20, 100, 200, 300 years. It happens very slowly. It's been happening faster because of people, but it also happens naturally. The last thing we're going to do today is watch this video. Before, when we looked at this Joaquin Kit Fox, this was about the bad effects of forest <coughs> fires. But sometimes forest fires are necessary. That means we need them. Sometimes forest fires are a good thing. So this is gonna look at the good effects of forest fires. Cause remember, not all changes are bad. Sometimes a change into the environment is for the better. There was a time before our ancestors smashed flint and steel together when they felt the cold lack of fire in their lives. But anthropologists theorize that early hominids relied on lightning to cause forest fires from which they could collect coals and burning sticks. Fire gave them the ability to cook food and clear land and became central in many rituals and traditions. So instead of seeing forest fires as an exclusively bad thing, ancient humans may have learned to appreciate them. Yet it wasn't just humans who benefited from these natural phenomena. Even as they destroyed trees, fires also helped the forest themselves. However counterintuitive that seems. In fact, Several forest species, such as select conifers, need fire to survive. But how can fire possibly create life in addition to destroying it? The answer lies in the way that certain forests grow. In the conifer-rich forests of Western North America, lodgepole pines constantly seek the sun. Their seeds prefer to grow on open sunny ground, which pits saplings against each other as each tries to get more light by growing straighter and faster than its neighbors. Over time, generations of slender, lofty lodgepoles form an umbrella-like canopy that shades the forest floor below. But as the tree's pine cones mature to release their twirling seeds, this signals a problem for the lodgepole's future. Very few of these seeds will germinate in the cool, sunless shade created by their towering parents. These trees have adapted to this problem by growing two types of cones. There are the regular annual cones that release seeds spontaneously. And Remember, annual means yearly. That means they release seeds one time per year, every year. Type called serotonous cones, which need an environmental trigger to free their seeds. And then they have these cones that could stay for many years and they only release their seeds when the environment tells them to, when they get a trigger saying start from the environment. For example, a forest fire could make them release, let go of their seeds. Serotonous cones are produced in thousands and are like waterproof time capsules sealed with resinous pitch. Many are able to stay undamaged on the tree for decades. A decade is 10 years, so they can stay on the tree for 10, 20, 30 years. They just sit there and wait for the environment to change. Cones that fall to the ground can be viable for several years as well. But when temperatures get high enough, the cones pop open. Let's see that in action. Once it's gotten started, a coniferous forest fire typically spreads something like this. Flames ravage the thick understory provided by species like Douglas fir, a shade-tolerant tree that's able to thrive under the canopy of lodgepole pines. The fire uses these smaller trees as a stepladder to reach the higher canopy of old lodgepole pines. That ignites a tremendous crown fire, reaching temperatures of up to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's well more than the 115 to 140 degrees that signal the moment when serotonous seeds can be freed. At those temperatures, the cones burst open, releasing millions of seeds which are carried by the hot air to form new forests. After the fire, carbon-rich soils and an open sunlit landscape help lodgepole seeds germinate quickly and sprout in abundance. From the death of the old forest comes the birth of the new. Fires are also important for the wider ecosystem as a whole. 
Without wildfires to rejuvenate trees, key forest species would disappear. And so would the many creatures that depend on them. And if a fire-dependent forest goes too long without burning, that raises the risk of a catastrophic blaze. So this is our problem now, is that we have been stopping forest fires because we think they're always bad. We stop them, we put them out with water, we have the fire trucks come, the helicopters that put fires out from the sky. But because of that, the forest has gone a long time with no fire. There's more trees, there's more dead, dry leaves. Dead leaves on the ground that are dry. Now when there's a forest fire, they get too big. They get so much bigger, all right? And it could destroy a forest completely. That's why the fires, for example, California and America gets a lot of fires. That's why they're so bad now. They burn down everything because we stopped them for so many years when we're supposed to have them, okay? So stopping a forest fire is not always a good thing. Then the next forest fire will be even bigger because there's so much more to burn. To destroy a forest completely, not to mention people's homes and lives. That's why forest rangers sometimes intentionally start controlled burns to reduce fuels in order to keep the more dangerous wildfires at bay. So they actually start They may be frightening fires. and destructive forces of nature, but wildfires are also vital to the existence of healthy boreal forest ecosystems. By coming to terms with that, we can protect ourselves from their more damaging effects while enabling the forests, like the legendary phoenix, to rise reborn from their own ashes. All right, so very interesting. Now we've learned a whole different perspective, a whole different idea than the first one, right? This video was definitely different from the video we watched before about the Huang Qin fox. Here is your homework. Draw a line down the middle of a paper. Write a title at the top of each half. On one side, draw a slow change to an environment. So here my title might be erosion, weathering, drought. Well, maybe not drought. Drought's usually a bit quicker. But you guys know a lot of different changes that happen slowly. Climate change with the polar bear, okay? So your title is about that. On the other side, draw a fast change. You guys know a lot of fast changes. So on this side, you're going to draw a fast change and your title should be the name of that fast change. Take a picture of your writing from today's class, page 321, and send that in and then take a picture of your homework. So you'll have two things to send in tonight. All right, bye everybody. Have a great bye day. Bye.